Good morning and welcome to Metropolitan Community Church of Richmond. We want to welcome each and every one of you here, regardless if you're in the sanctuary for in-person worship or you're in the virtual world, uh, you are welcomed here and know that you are blessed because you are the beloved of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the coming and the movement of the Holy Spirit, but it's also the birthday of the church. And so I want to wish each and every one of you, MCC Richmond, the church here in Richmond, Virginia, happy birthday. What do you think about that? And if any of you would like to uh, uh, grab a piece of cake with me this week or celebrate in any way that you would like uh, your birthday as the church, uh, you just come on down here and, and celebrate with me. Last week, we had so many volunteers uh, in the church on, uh, I think it was Tuesday. It was like a party going on here. And I was in my office trying to study for the sermon today, and uh, I kept hearing all this laughter and all these jokes. And uh, so I went outside and I said, can y'all please hold it down a little bit? To which they said, no come join us. And so I did. And it was great. Uh, and there was an absolute, a lot of work that got done at the church. So thank you, each and every one of you that, that come down to, uh, to spend a little bit of time at the church. Know that you are welcomed. And know if you don't uh, have time to just work and you just want to come say, hey, I'm going to be here Monday through Thursday. And I welcome you and I'm glad to spend time with you. For worship, uh, we invite you to uh, get a, a small glass of juice or wine or whatever you'd like to have uh, it when we share in the holy meal. Get a cracker or a cookie or a bagel uh, so that when we get to that portion of our service, you can participate fully with us. And also get a candle so that as we light our Christ candle together, we can literally begin building community around the world. We also invite you to use the chat, books on, chat box on Facebook Live to, to check in with one another. Uh, welcome people to worship. If you see someone that you haven't seen before, uh, welcome them uh, to MCC Richmond and know that uh, they will love getting that welcome. And those of you that are in the sanctuary for the very first time, thank you for being here. I pray that you will uh, feel a part of this community and that you will be blessed by God today as you worship with us. Last week, I received emails from people in, are you ready for this? Uh, California, New York, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Hawaii was back. Colorado, Washington State, Oregon State, Arizona, Michigan, Mexico, Ohio, Wisconsin, Texas, Nebraska, Georgia, Minnesota, and uh, somebody sent me an email from India. Can you imagine that? Yes. A VCU student who uh, has returned to uh, his homeland and wanted me to know how much MCC Richmond makes a difference in his life. And so we are so grateful for that. And I would say that is the movement of the Holy Spirit working in ways that we may not even imagine. Please send me an email from wherever you are participating in worship today. You can send it to godguykenny at gmail.com. Uh, G-O-D-G-U-Y-K-E-N-N-Y at gmail.com. We're in for a treat because we have chosen to come to worship the living God. So let us begin our time of worship as we sing together every time I feel the Spirit in my heart. Bye. 
you feel the spirit moving in your heart yet? Yes. Get ready, church. I love that. Thank you, musicians. And you know what? I'm kind of jealous of Danny. And let me tell you why. Not because he's attractive. He's, uh, he's got all this uh, uh, talent to play the drums. But he gets to come to church barefooted. You know I just love that. I just love that. <laughs> I might take you up on that, Danny. What do you think? <laughs> Today as we worship, let us set the intention that we will have an experience with the living God, with the movement of the Holy Spirit moving within us and among us this day. Let us get comfortable. You might want to close your eyes or just relax. Relax for this time of worship and hear these words of intention by uh, Reverend Sharon Wiley. She has written a poem. It's called Wholeness. We speak so often of brokenness in religious life. Let us today speak of wholeness. You are welcome here. All of you welcome here. Every part of you beautiful just the way you are. Here you do not need to be something more or something less. There's no holding back here, no hiding here, no exerting yourself, no trying to do more or to be more. You have an errant worth and dignity here, absolutely nothing to prove here, nothing to prove to me or to the person sitting next to you or to the children or to anyone. You don't have to try and be more witty or more quiet or more outgoing. You are beautiful, every part of you beautiful, just the way you are. You do not need to change anything about yourself to be welcomed here. Your skin, your hair, your belly, your limbs, your face, all beautiful, just the way you are. You are extraordinary, a creation of the loving God each and every one of you different from each and everyone else and beautiful in your own beautiful way you are breathtaking let us worship the god who has created you just the way you are amen amen we will now sing together spirit of the living god fall fresh on me see Georgia she's like uh oh what's up the pastor's up to something yesterday was a glorious day that we shared together not only was it beautiful here in Richmond Virginia but we also had the joy of participating in a service in which Georgia was ordained <laughs> yes indeed 
and I, I want you to know there were, uh, there were many clergy that participated in that service yesterday, and of all the clergy I got to sit next to, ooh, this woman, she was just as misbehaving as I am, and we just tore it up. We had a great time celebrating Georgia and the work that God continues to do in her life. So would you welcome Reverend Georgia. What a blessing, what a time, what a God we serve. And I want to thank, as I said yesterday, that was not my ordination, that was your ordination. Because without you adding to my life, I wouldn't be here today, each and every one of you. And to my pastor for being such a kind heart person to allow me to grow in such a way that not only was it rewarding, but it was challenging because I was so used to people critiquing me and tweaking me, but he was a man of God that trusts God to do the right thing. I love you, love you. unabashedly, publicly, you're the man. <laughs> So the journey continues, and hopefully it will continue with your support and love that you have shown me. And to my beloved out there in the virtual world, welcome to our service. Um, I'm really full this morning, but I'm so appreciative that it's about the Holy Spirit uh, that dwells with each, within each and every one of us. And when I got up to do this community welcome, you know, last week I said there's no I in God. And this week, Spirit says, but there's us in Jesus. Amen. J-E-S. U-S. And this. And so we are the us. We are the beloved. So welcome. I, I accept the title. I receive it with appreciation. And I receive it in the love that it was sent to me. So those in our virtual world that have uh, not joined the service before, we welcome you. Of course, we welcome our family and our beloved friends. And your presence makes such a difference to me and I'm sure to this community and everybody that's in the sanctuary. Just tuning in says so much that you want to be part of this beloved time. So as we go into this service, we do it three ways. First, welcoming you, then we light our Christ, uh, we do our Rua, which is our breath of being. And then we go into our lighting of the Christ candle. And as I said before, it's, it's not separate, it's one activity, because there's no parts in God. One God, one power, one presence. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And let us say our greeting together. And as Brother Philip would say, say it with gusto, say it from within, knowing it is your truth. Let us greet each other. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, how you love, or who you love. God welcomes you, and so do we. You are welcome here. And let those words just permeate and stay within you as we go into our Ruah. This is a place of being where we have this intimate time with the allness that we are, the Holy Spirit of God. And we do it through taking in that breath, the life source that feeds us physically with oxygen, but also feeds us spiritually with its presence. So take a breath in with intent and with meaning. Let it fill your body, the vessel, and let it fill your spirit. Now exhale, feel it as it exits your body, that breath, knowing that the Holy Spirit will not. Now let's take in another breath another 
knowing that we've taken in grace, we've taken in mercy, balance, but most of all, we allow the Holy Spirit to feel and touch all the deep places. We allow the Holy Spirit to touch our wounds and our hurts, to heal, to harmonize. Ooh, da, 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 da. Now let it out. Breathe it out with joy, knowing that everything is in divine order. Every intent has been met. Let's take in one more breath. This one, let it saturate. Oh, yes. Feel it, touch it, taste it. Knowing it is just for you, you and the Holy Spirit, intimate, the oneness. Sit with that a second. Now release it. Knowing that as you let it go, nothing is lost. All is gained and all is well. Now smile. Let your spirit smile and say, well done. I accept and I receive your presence, Holy Spirit, to stay in this place at this time. There's only you and God. Only you and the Holy Spirit. And we say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love of me just as I am. Thank you. And thank you. Now let us get our Christ candle out. And as we light this candle, we know that we're not lighting or starting anything because the light that's within us burns eternally. But this is just a demonstration to remind us that we are the lights of God, just the way we are. As I say yesterday, nothing to fix, tweak, save, or salvage. And as the pastor say, God didn't make junk. We are the perfect expression. So let us light our candle symbolizing the light that's within. And as I light this candle, I light it for everyone within this sanctuary. You agree? Yes. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for this candle of light that burns externally, but we thank you for the permanent light that burns internally forever and ever, that you love us just the way we are. Holy Spirit, transform our hearts, our minds, and our spirit this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
I may not be a reverend, but I am certainly filled with the Holy Spirit Amen. today. That's right. That's right. Will you join with me in prayer? Creator God, God of all peoples, God who is above all nations, all borders, all nationalities, we thank you this Pentecost for those who brought your good news to the world in all languages and for the Holy Spirit that inspired them as she still inspires us today. And Holy One, may we be inspired by your Holy Spirit to continue your mission of love every day, everywhere we go. We know that Jesus broke all barriers. Help us ourselves to break down barriers of injustice, of prejudice, of hate, and help us to love, to love even those who do not love us. We do know that love could change the world. We pray for the victims of injustice everywhere, past and present, and of war, as has been happening in Israel and Gaza over the last two weeks, and continues to rage in Syria, Afghanistan, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. No matter their language, we understand their pain and their suffering. We lift them up with our compassion and honor them with our love. And God, we pray for those who are affected by the COVID-19 epidemic. We lift them up with our compassion and honor them with our love. And we pray for those we know ourselves who are also suffering for whatever reason. We now lift up our individual prayers of concern to you as we speak their names. Jean L. Porch, Jim Loving, Wayne Throckmorton, Kim. Lift these prayers up, O oh God, and help us to be of service to them and to others, others we may not even know. We thank you for the Metropolitan Community Church of Richmond Community, which is one way we can be of service to you, to Richmond, to wherever we may be virtually, through giving our time, talents, and treasures so that we can carry your good news forward. In all of your many names, but today, Pentecost, especially in your name as the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today's, sa today's sacred text is from the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 19. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they all met in one room. Suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent, rushing wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as she enabled them. Now there were devout people living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled. But they were bewildered to hear their native languages being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, all of these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears these words in our native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, all Jews, or converts to Judea, Judea, Judaism and Cretans and Arabs, too. We hear them preaching, each in our own language, about the marvels of God. All were amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But the others, the others said mockingly, they've been, they drunk too much, too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and the eleven and addressed the crowd, women and men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk, you drunk as you think, think it is, only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it's what Joel the prophet spoke of. In the days to come, and it's our God who speaks, I will pour out my spirit on all humankind. Your daughters and sons will prophesy. Your young people will see visions and your elders will dream dreams. Even on the most insignificant of my people, both women and men, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy, and I will display wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. God of this city, you're the king of these people, you're the lord of this nation, you are 
You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done here. You are the Lord of creation, the creator of all things. You are the king above all kings. You are. You are the strength in the weakness. You are the love to the broken. You are the joy in the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. Where glory shines from hearts alive with praise for you and love for you in this city. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come, and greater things have still to be done here. There is no one like you, God. 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 Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. shines from hearts alive with praise for you and love for you in this city greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in this city greater things have yet and greater things are still to be done here. Still to be done here. Still to be done up to sing I said you go up there and you knock it out of the park Les and Les you knocked it out of the church we love that 
The message of that song is so true. That there is nobody like our God, and God is still doing things. There's things to be done in the city, right? And that's why I think MCC Richmond needs to continue to blow the doors off of the church and spread our glitter within Richmond. What do you think, church? Will you join me in doing just that? Yes. So, Les, thank you for uh, singing with, for us today. You did a fabulous job, and we're grateful for you and all that you do here. Today, uh, we also uh, want uh, to take uh, a, a, another moment to, to thank Reverend Georgia for the year that she spent of internship here. It was a joy to me to see Georgia grow and to be stretched. And, you know, there was the times that, that we had a talk. And that we shared. But you know, there were, there were times of understanding. And one of the, the things that I benefited from the most in uh, being uh, the, the joy of supervising her internship was getting to know a little bit more about her story. Georgia's story, of all things, is God. In all things that she does, she comes, she gives honor to God. And that is such a testimony. Um, the other thing I want to share with you is, you know, when I was finished with my academic pursuit and I was doing my year of internship, when I prepared to come here, I was outdone that after 20 years of being a pastor, MCC uh, mandated and required me to do an internship for a year. And I said to them, what am I going to learn about ministry that I don't already know? And they said, well, that's for you to find out. And I did learn things. I learned things and I grew. And uh, Georgia, you learned things too. I love it. Georgia said last week at the food pantry, you know I'm 76 years old. And I was like, <laughs> I would have never assumed that. But for somebody to be 76 years old and to continue to be stretched and to be learned, that is somebody who knows the source of her God. So Georgia, come up here and receive some gifts, girl. Ooh, I know. Uh, Philip, we, we gave Philip a, a bouquet of flowers. We gave Georgia a living plant. Here you go, Georgia. Thank you for that. Here's a card. And keeping with our great uh, interns, notice this bag has a bunch of kisses and glitter and a bottle of conundrum. So Georgia, you go on. Here you go. Thank you for being who you are. All right. And uh, just like Philip, uh, Georgia is not done here yet. We are excited that uh, she will continue to be involved in worship and transition into something new. That's because the Holy Spirit is continuing to use her, right? Just like the Holy Spirit will continue to use each and every one of you. Now let's boil down to what I was studying last week when that party was going on in the community center. I was loving that party. You know, the temptation for uh, preachers on Pentecost Sunday is to try to explain or define who and what the Holy Spirit is and the ways that the Holy Spirit works in our lives and also the difference that the Holy Spirit makes in our lives all in one sermon. It's not going to happen. And I know you're relieved. <laughs> the danger of that approach is a sermon that can be more like an essay, a theological essay, or a doctrinal mess that can be boring and very long. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so today, <laughs> I would like instead for us to stretch our imaginations by letting the Holy Spirit loose. Now, Georgia is excited about that because she has some Pentecostal background in her, right? And she's like, oh, no, you're not going to do that. Yes, I am. We're going to let the Holy Spirit loose, and I would say the Holy Spirit is doing a good job this morning, right? Meeting our needs and meeting with us, but letting the Holy Spirit loose in a new way, in a way that we don't try to comprehend the Holy Spirit, or try to put definitions of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's movements among us, but to consider how it feels when the Holy Spirit is doing something. So how do we feel? How do we feel? 
when we're having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Regardless if you know it or not, the Holy Spirit is active and is working in each and every one of our lives. But my hunch is this. Most of the time, we just don't know it because we're not thinking about it at the time. The Holy Spirit is that inner voice that tells you to call up a friend. And as you do, you understand, you hear that your friend really needed to talk to you, that they're going through a struggle, and what a difference that your call made in their life. The Holy Spirit is that clarity of mind to make a difficult decision in an instant, just knowing that you've made the right decision. Five years ago, yesterday, you voted to call me to be your pastor, and that was in an instant that I knew that it was the right decision when I began to apply here and began to meet. It was a tough decision, a decision that would mean leaving my home, leaving my family and friends, and leaving my retirement in the ELCA. But you know, I knew it was the right thing to do. That was the Holy Spirit at work in my life. And I pray that you will confirm it was the Holy Spirit active in your life. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's activity, the Holy Spirit's movement in your life is when you know that something is happening, but you don't know where you got that information from. That's the movement of the Holy Spirit. That's God working in your life. That's those moments when we say, wow, that was a God shot moment. A time when you knew and felt the presence of the divine working in your life, bringing that peace that surpasses all understanding, even in times of turmoil and dysfunction. Most of us have times in our lives when we're just not quite sure what's happening. Times when everything appears to be going south, when going north just seemed to serve us fine. Can you relate to that church? Yeah. Right, where everything just seems to be going wrong. Or times when we feel that we're just at the end of our rope and we need relief. And God says that we will deserve relief and God will meet our needs. Or when we ask ourselves, where is God in this mess? And what is the Holy Spirit up to? It's during these seasons of, of uncertainty and times of great joy. If you spent any time with me, you'll know that I'll say, watch out. The Holy Spirit's up to something, and she's a big old mess. Because she is not going to let you go until she's done. And that done time usually means when we are done being loved up, so we can go on to our next assignment that God has for us. But what if, Instead of trying to understand the movement of the Holy Spirit and asking what the Holy Spirit is up to, what if instead we focus and consider on what it feels like when we're having an encounter or an experience with the Holy Spirit, when we realize, even if we're kicking and screaming, that the divine is up to something in our life. And most often, that means that change, some kind of change, is about to happen. Here's the deal. I believe that it's the feeling that we have within the core of our being that we'll remember and will be an encouragement to us the next time we need to know that everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Not simply the understanding of how the Holy Spirit works or if the Holy Spirit is working. Maya Angelou's quote means so much. Maya Angelou said, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or what you did. They will remember how you made them feel. And I believe this is the same with God, that we'll remember how we feel. So stop and think for just a moment. What is it that we feel? when we sense that incredible feeling of divine presence, of God's love, of God's acceptance, of God's welcome, of God's care for us. 
Is it confusion? Or feelings of being overjoyed or overwhelmed? Feelings of being uh, beside ourselves, undone or blown away? Or perhaps feelings of being totally disoriented, uncomfortable, scared, even excited? I'm here to tell you, if you're going to do God's business, you're going to feel all of that. You're going to feel all of that. Because there are many times that we just don't know what's going to happen, but we feel the blessing of the Holy One as we step out in faith. The truth is, many of us have a tendency to want to avoid our feelings. Let me say that again. Most of us have a tendency to want to avoid our feelings, to discount them, to not trust them, and to dismiss them. Some of us numb the hard feelings and justify the joyous ones with questions of self-doubt or being unworthy. And that's when we have to remember that God says we are always worthy. We are always worthy. Yet when something extraordinary happens that is beyond our control and is not our doing and is more than mere coincidence, it is then that we tend to realize that through the Holy Spirit, God is doing something or has done something incredible in or through us. It's the knowing that is the heart of who the Holy Spirit is even if we don't know how to describe it. But it's the feeling of what the Holy Spirit does that helps us make it through another day. Another argument. Another bad day at work. Another difficult diagnosis. Another treatment. It's the feeling that we have when God meets our needs that helps us have the confidence to know that God holds us in God's loving embrace, caring for us, loving us, and making sure that we get what we need, and, and at the same time, telling us that we are worth all of this just the way we are. When we feel God stirring within us, it's the Holy Spirit in action, and that leaves us wanting more and more and more. It's not always the knowing of what the Holy Spirit does that makes the difference. I have to tell you, one of the joys of being your pastor is to hear people share about how they felt welcomed and loved when they had their first MCC Richmond experience, and how they continue to feel loved and cared for by this spiritual community. Over and over again, I hear stories of how people felt broken and emotionally bankrupt, how they didn't feel valued or cared for or accepted or loved by anyone. And then they made the decision to walk through the doors of MCC Richmond or to tune in to the virtual service. And as they did, they were greeted and welcomed with words of kindness, with love, and with smiles that help them feel safe and at home. And there are many who don't feel safe or that they have a home anywhere. Friends, let me tell you, this is a movement of the Holy Spirit. Those who worship in person or virtually see and hear people who look and sound just like them. Lesbian, gay, transgender, straight, white, Black, different shapes and sizes, all safe to be themselves. And what they see when they tune in here is people celebrating one another. And how do we celebrate each other? Just the way we are. Feelings of love and kindness, friendship, acceptance, worth and value. And most of all, a sense of community shared openly here. And if you don't have that experience, you come talk to me, and I will make sure that we make it right. I will make sure that we make it right. These are the experiences that people dream of and long for, some for most of their lives. This is the movement of the Holy Spirit. 
many feel overwhelmed by the feelings of love, acceptance, and welcome, and find themselves crying through the first several services. I want you to know if you're crying today, we get it. Because all of us have been there at one time or another. And you know what I say, tears are good, and the pastor will lead the train. I am not afraid to cry. I am not afraid to cry, because when the Holy Spirit moves, you can't hold that back. Why would you want to? Why would you want to? Others feel speechless and overjoyed to have found a safe spiritual community. Many feel grateful that they can simply be who they are without judgment or criticism and celebrated for being the fabulous person that God has created them to be. A dream that many have longed for and wondered if it was at all possible. This my friends, is the movement of the Holy Spirit. Some come here to heal and shed the degradation and abuse that they have experienced. They are surprised to discover that there are those who have been fed and taught the same garbage that they were, that they had to be something other than the person that God created them to be. And yet they are also shocked to discover that healing begins as they share how they started to slowly believe that they, were, that they are the beloved of God, made in the image of a loving God, and that they have a life-changing story of acceptance and love to share with others. And they are shocked to discover that their healing continues and is deeper as they share their story with somebody else and do their best to make life better for somebody else. Friends, I have to tell you, that is the movement of the Holy Spirit. These are just a few examples of what the Holy Spirit feels like. Feelings that mean so much and literally changes our perspective and our lives. A feeling we want more and more to experience. I heard a TED talk this past week by a, a, a wonderful, wonderful black woman, pastor, and this is what she said. Her name was Yvette Flounder. This is what she said. Our faith is a movement, not a monument. Our faith is a movement, not a monument. In other words, God isn't done with us yet. There's a lot of work to do in this city. And the work begins with you and me. Because we cannot give away a gift that we do not have. And until we feel that inner stirring of the Holy Spirit telling us that we are okay and that we're loved and that we're valued and that we're accepted by God, we will not be able to share that story effectively with others. But you know what I say? Do it anyway. Because it's in the doing that you'll believe even more. I asked a few people uh, this week what it felt like for them to feel the Holy Spirit in their lives. And I... I would like to share all of them, but I have to tell you, there's too much. I asked them to share three or four sentences. Lord have mercy, some wrote a book, but that's okay. But I want to share some of them with you. Calvin told me this. When I perceive the Holy Spirit around me, I first become filled with unconditional love for it, myself, and everyone throughout the world as well as the sensation of being welcomed and appreciated beyond a measure. This all is followed by a peace and serenity that leads me to have faith that no matter what happens, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. And then, and this is how it works, folks, and then fear, doubt, and uncertainty arises, from my human soul, which naturally causes me to question whether what happens in the moment will ultimately lead to a positive outcome. And then finally, a wave of relief and confidence washes over me after the Holy Spirit has escorted me to the best possible outcome, regardless of the consequences I must face as a result of my choosing to follow its direction and guidance. Once again, it has saved me from my 
Thank you, Calvin, for those words. Yes. Carol Anderson wrote that the Holy Spirit comes to me in so many different ways uh, and that produces very different feelings. Sometimes the feeling is best described as light and soft, as butterfly wings brushing my skin. Only it is my heart. A softness that makes me take note and it brings calm and reflective feeling. Then other times, there is a nagging, uh, there is a nagging must-do feeling, a, lead, a, a leading me to something with intensity. I would describe it as giving me a feeling of excitement, of being drawn into something like when someone pulls you forward by the hand saying, come on, come on. Then finally, sometimes there is a feeling of euphoria, like when I'm dancing spinning around and feeling pure joy. So when the Holy Spirit moves Carol when she's dancing, and we all benefit from that, and it's something that she enjoys. Thank you, Carol, for your words. John Porch, I love what John Porch said. He said, I especially feel the Holy Spirit is moving in my life when I see MCC Richmond has helped over 900 people in March and that my con contributions uh, in the form of time, talent, and treasure have helped make this happen. That's right. Thank you, John, for reminding us every time we serve a meal at the food pantry, every time we welcome somebody, every time the, De the Virginia Department of Health calls us and asks if we can do a mobile vaccination clinic the next day and people come to get vaccinated, we know that's the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Thank you, John, for your time, talent, and treasure that helps the food pantry be possible. And thanks to every one of you who contribute to that ministry as well. And I love what MJ said. She was very honest. MJ said, I don't really think of the Holy Spirit as a separate entity for me. The Holy Spirit is God, one and the same. I think God protects me every day, every day on the road, in my house, all the time, especially on the road, so many close calls. It has to be God, the Holy Spirit. It's not so much a feeling, but a knowing. Thank you, MJ, for trusting that the Holy Spirit has your back and that God is working through the Holy Spirit in your life. Philip Adams said, the Holy Spirit is like a cool breeze on a hot summer day. She is that well of warmth that comes from doing a good deed and the satisfaction of feeling contentment. She is the urging sensation of needing to do and say something, knowing that without that word or deed, the world is going to be worse off. The Holy Spirit feels like surrounding peace, embracing, moving, dancing with the light and the darkness. The Holy Spirit feels like motivation, energy, love, and justice. Yes. And every time that we share the Holy Spirit, every time that we stand up and speak up, every time that we go out and try to make a difference in somebody else's life, that's the Holy Spirit helping us to bring justice to the world. And God knows our world needs a lot of justice. What do you think about that, church? And so there you have it. Many different perspectives and feelings. But you know what? As different as we all are, as different as the Holy Spirit moves in our lives, it is the same God manifest through the same Holy Spirit. So how do you feel and experience the movement of the Holy Spirit in your life? This week, I would encourage you to take time to sit on a park bench, to go out, enjoy nature, to take a walk by the river, or to sit quietly in your quiet space and allow God to reveal something to you about the Holy Spirit that you have not experienced yet. And my hunch is that as you experience this, it will be the presence 
of love, pure love within you. That's the Holy Spirit in action. That's the Holy Spirit changing your life. That's the Holy Spirit speaking directly to you. It's a feeling that you just can't let go of, and it's a feeling that you can't get enough of. Let the Holy Spirit loose. Watch out, because she's going to be messing with y'all. Amen? Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. If God doesn't do anything else for us, God has already done enough. Good morning, church, and happy Pentecost Sunday to you. Good morning, church. Happy Pentecost Sunday. We should get excited about Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Look at the person beside you and say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Church, the fundraising team is getting ready to start its next big fundraiser, a fundraiser in which we're calling Sowing a Seed into MCC Richmond. Now, hopefully most of you have received your letters, and if you have not, please get in touch with the church office or Pastor Kenny or myself, and we will make sure that you receive that letter. But this is one of the biggest fundraisers that, uh, I shouldn't say the biggest fundraiser, but this is a big fundraiser because we are in dire need of your help. So I just want to take a moment this morning to read part of this letter to you that you should have already received. Greetings, MCC Richmond members and friends. What an exciting time for MCC Richmond as we begin to celebrate our 43rd anniversary this June. There's an old saying that when praises go up, blessings come down. That statement ran so true when MCC Richmond received the tremendous news that a generous donor gave $90,000 to pay off the church's mortgage. Yeah. As blessed as we are, there's more work to be done. God isn't finished with us yet. The fundraising team is turning its attention to our next big fundraiser called Sowing a Seed into MCC Richmond, and we desperately need your help. Our sanctuary is in great need of repair. 
that we've done a lot of work. We've painted and we've um, replaced the wood casings, but our ceiling is in desperate need of not repair, but it needs to be replaced. So after consultation and investigation with a structural engineer and contractor, it is determined that the ceiling can no longer be patched. It has to be replaced. The carpet in the sanctuary is worn and it needs attention. So please join us in sowing your seeds to complete our goal to replace the ceiling and to replace the carpet in the church. Donations can be made in the following ways. Write a check to MCC Richmond. You can visit mccrichmond.org or you can pay by bill pay or bill, I'm sorry, Papa, you know, I'm horrible at um, computers. And um, so basically, I said, write that check and just send that check to MCC <laughs> Richmond. <laughs> oh, God. But God is good. And, and God, <laughs> some of you know that I'm just horrible when it comes to computer. <laughs> Change is not good for an old person like myself. But once again, write that check to MCC Richmond because we definitely need it. The ceiling definitely needs to be replaced. And so we can only do that with, with your donations. Remember, church, that God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us go to God in prayer. <laughs> oh, gracious God, we're so thankful for you. We're thankful for this church. We're, we're thankful for all that this church does for the community. And we pray that these blessings that we will bring to you today and this week and the, throughout the next month will be used to uplift your kingdom. In your precious name we pray. Amen. observe a moment of reflection as we silently confess our concerns and shortcomings to God before we are fed this holy meal. Let us say together, loving and gracious God, forgive those things we have done and left undone that have caused pain to you, others, and ourselves. Help us Help to us learn, learn from these things and remind us of, of your forgiving presence and transforming love. Bless people of God. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, God forgives us, God heals us, and God showers us with gifts of love, hope, and grace just the way we are and welcomes us to this feast of victory in life. Together, let us sing and remember God's transforming gift of life and love.
promise to his disciples long ago and to us that he will always be with us. We remember how on the night before his betrayal and arrest, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for the bread, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember how after supper Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks for the cup, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for everyone. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. By the love and grace of God, may this bread and cup be the body and love of Jesus for us and with us. Let us sing together. Come celebrate Jesus. <laughs> together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us partake of God's gifts of forgiveness, love, and grace. Let's pray together. Creator God, we give you thanks that you sent the Holy Spirit to come and to mess with us. Thank you for that healing touch. Thank you for the love that is bestowed upon us. And thank you for the ways that you will use us through the movement of the Holy Spirit to bring needed change in this world. Help us to be confident of your leading, of your love, of your presence, and of your grace. We pray all of these things in all of your many names, and especially in the name of Jesus our Savior, we all say together, Amen, amen, and so it is. Calvin's got some announcements to, to share with us. Would you welcome Calvin? Good morning, church. Good morning, Calvin. Before I got to the announcements, I just wanted to take a moment and say uh, thank you for this opportunity to be your communications and social media designer. Um, it has been a privilege for me to serve in this way, and I wanted to just take a moment and thank you all for this opportunity. All right, so now, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Y'all can clap for me, y'all can clap for me. <laughs> all right, so uh, real quickly, a uh, reminder that the Board of Directors is meeting today, this afternoon at 1 p.m., and the meeting will be held part in person and then part virtually, so that hybrid thing that we have going on, so uh, you can attend. little technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got to expect the unexpected here. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, just a reminder that one of the agenda items for discussion will be the guidelines for in-person worship and church activities. So uh, we will send out more information as that becomes available. I uh, want to take a moment to welcome back Miss Ricky. Uh, to come up and tell us more about the activities that will be happening for our 43rd anniversary. As most of you know, in June, we will be celebrating 43 years here at MCC Richmond. 43 years of faith, 43 years of fellowship, and 43 years of worship, and the best is yet to come. 
Now, every Sunday in June, we will be doing extraordinary things here at MCC Richmond, but on the last Sunday, the 27th, we will be outside in the wonderful courtyard of the Branch House, but we'll have outside worship, and after worship, we'll have a picnic, and after the picnic, we'll have a silent auction because it's all about raising money for this ceiling. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Also, too, um, what we want to do for uh, the first Sunday in June, we want to have our church sparkling clean. So next week, we're putting together some volunteers to come in and help clean the church. And if you would like to volunteer, please see myself, Pastor Kenny, or any board uh, member, and we'll be more than happy to direct you with a mop <laughs> and a broom. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ricky. Uh, one other event I would like to add, I'll be sending an email about it here, hopefully today. Uh, the Richmond Kickers is having their Pride Night game. So for those of y'all who don't know, Richmond Kickers is all about pro soccer. They're gonna have their Pride Night event. It's gonna be actually uh, Saturday, June 5th. Uh, we are going to also have the opportunity to have a table set up there uh, so that we can share what Rich, uh, MCC Richmond has to offer. Uh, the game actually starts at 6.30 and then one of the blessings of this game is going to be that for every ticket that is purchased, a donation will be made to MCC Richmond by Virginia Pride. So the tickets are $18 and Virginia Pride will donate $6 to the church for every ticket purchased. So got that ceiling so <laughs> so please come out and support that event also I will be recruiting volunteers uh, to table at the event uh, if hopefully the shifts only be like half an hour or so piece because I know some people want to watch soccer I know I do and so uh, more to come I'll have that email out to you here shortly okay and so a reminder to send Pastor Kenny an email at godguykenny at gmail.com and share where you participated in worship for those of you that are out in the virtual world. And I want to thank you all for what you do here at MCC Richmond to help us thrive and not just survive. And remember, all will be well. Thank you all.